There we go. I think it's on. There we go. Well, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Howell. And uh, I better make sure my phone's on silent in case my parents text me, huh? It was already, so that's great. Uh, so thank you, Pastor Howell. It's such a privilege every time I have the opportunity um, to speak here at First Baptist Church. If you're turning your Bibles to Luke chapter number two, you know, like I said, I'm so grateful to Pastor Howell for giving us, uh, as a pastoral staff, the privilege and the opportunity to speak from this pulpit. And I, I just want to tell you that others may do this, but I am not here to call into question things that our pastor has said, even if it may be just a hunting story. You know, I, I would never dream of getting behind this pulpit and calling into question the things our pastor has said. So I uh, just wanted to make sure right off the bat you knew that. You don't have to worry about that for me tonight. Um, so Luke chapter number 2. Luke chapter number 2, we're going to start in verse number 8. Um, the Bible says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass... As the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told unto them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Lord, I thank you so much for giving us this message, the same message you gave to these shepherds. Lord, I thank you for allowing us the privilege of, of hearing from you. I pray that you would help me today as I speak. Lord, I pray that you'd calm my nerves and that you would give me the power that I need to speak with authority, Lord. I pray that, um, that, Lord, that I would hide behind you and you would be the one that would speak, Lord, that you would do a work in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but when I read Luke chapter number two, it's like memories just start flooding back through my mind. I love Christmas. And, uh, I mean, at our house, we had so many Christmas traditions, so many things uh, that we would do so many uh, fun activities. My parents, if you don't know them, they are crazy people. They are fun people. But I will t tell you, everything we did was centered around Jesus Christ. You know, even just having fun, having a good time, uh, doing fun things together. Everything we did, Jesus was the center of it all, especially around Christmas time. Jesus was always the center. We had many different traditions. But one thing I always loved, while I was there in Cambodia, almost every year we would do a Christmas play with the church. And we rotated through two different plays. Both of them were a lot of fun, lots of humor in them. You know, my dad is not going to do anything without some humor in it. So, of course, there was lots of humor in them. Uh, they were a lot of fun. But my favorite part every time was the shepherds. Man, I loved the shepherds. And uh, my parents understand probably better than most of you would, but in our plays, the shepherds were like, they, everybody loved it when we got to the shepherds part. Because everything else, you know, you, you don't want to put too much humor with Jesus in the manger, and you, you know, a lot of that stuff, you can't put a lot of humor in, but when it got to the shepherd scene, man, it was just laughing, right, Didi? Rolling on the floor laughing. Every year, it would be different. Most of the stuff in the play would be the same, but the shepherds, every year, one of the guys there, Wong, he's hilarious. He's like a comedian, and he would come up with all these different things we would do, and I always loved the shepherds, even from the time I was very, very little. In fact, my mom reminded me this morning about a time when I, 
I don't know exactly how old I am. My mom's probably going to comment on Facebook and correct me, you know. I mean, I don't really remember. I think I was probably like three years old or something, and it was my first time getting to be a sheep. And I was excited about it. It was great. I mean, I was going to get to be a sheep. I got to be with the shepherds. I got to be in the funny scene. I mean, I was excited about it. And uh, my parents tell me that, man, it was like I, I was just, I was thrilled that I got to be a sheep in this play. And my parents had us all, um, all the sheep and the shepherds, we were waiting outside the door to come in for the play. And I'm telling you, I'm wearing this sheep costume from head to toe, and we're in Cambodia. Now, I don't know if you know much about Cambodia, but it is very, very, very hot. Very hot in Cambodia. And I, I was getting warm. And next thing you know, my mom, is she's supposed to come in, come out there and let us know when we're supposed to come on in, when it's our cue, when it's time for the shepherds to come in. And she opens the door to let us know we're coming in, and I had taken my sheep costume off. I'm not going to tell you exactly what I was wearing underneath, but I think it was probably race car themed or uh, Winnie the Pooh themed or something like that. <laughs> so I'm standing out there, and my mom... Ryan, what is going on? And she, can you believe it? She wouldn't let me go in with the shepherds. I was heartbroken. I had to stay out there. All the other sheep, of course, you know, the pastor, the missionary's kid is the one kid, you know, who's being a brat. And everybody else got to go on in, and I had to stay outside. In fact, I think she made me go upstairs and get changed or something. It was ridiculous. But everybody else got to go on inside. And I did not. And I, so I, I, you, I have a long history with the shepherds. I love the shepherds. And I'm excited about talking about the shepherds uh, some tonight. And, you know, I imagine these shepherds. And I think part of the reason I imagine these shepherds this way is because of the way I got to see the shepherds in most of our plays uh, as a kid. But these shepherds, they were just regular guys. You know, I think sometimes we, we think of them as, you know, some like these serious guys who just like stood there with their staffs and waited for the angels to come. They're just standing there. The angels will come any minute. I'm just waiting. No, they were normal guys. They were, they were hanging out. They were watching their sheep. And I imagine the conversations that they may have had with each other. You know, one thing about men, you know, you're at work all day. You spend all your time working. It seems like you get a few minutes away from work and you'd, you'd be ready to just put it out of your mind. But no, most men, they just want to continue talking about their work. And so I imagine these shepherds, they're probably the same. They're standing, sitting around, they're talking about sheep. You know, you're around sheep all day. It seems like you want to talk about something else, but they're probably, they're talking about sheep. Man, did you see, uh, did you see Jedediah, his sheep, man? He, he, he don't know what he's doing, not like us. I mean, we water our sheep, sheep in the right place. We know how to graze our sheep. Our sheep, they're the ones that are in the best shape. You know, they, they, they really, really look good. They, we, we breed them just right, and nobody else does it. There's a reason they have chosen our sheep to be the ones that are used in the temple. You know, our, they're, they're the best sheep, and, you know, we can take pride in that. And they, they may be talking one guy, well, my boss sent me out here with 143 sheep all by myself. Expects me to take care of all of them here by myself, doing all of the work. And I imagine some old guy probably cuts in, well, you have no idea what it was like when I was a kid, man. You, you guys, you have no idea. When I, when I was younger, my dad sent me out here with 500 sheep just by myself. Y'all get sleep breaks. You get to take a nap every now and then. Not me, man. I had to stay up all night by myself, not another person in sight. Just me and the sheep and the bear. I mean, I killed most of the bears when I was a kid. You don't got to deal with them anymore, but, you know, and probably talking about, and they were just normal guys. You know, some of them maybe talking about politics. You know, those Romans, they're taxing us so much money. Can you believe what those Romans are doing? And, man, I can't wait till our Messiah comes and destroys those Romans. It's, yeah, it's going to be a great day. And, uh, you know, maybe, ah, oh, the Pharisees, you know, as long as the Pharisees are going with, oh, no, I think the Pharisees are in on it. They're in with the Romans. I tell you what, they're getting rich off of our backs. They're sitting there talking. The younger guys, maybe, oh, have you, you heard in Rome they're doing chariot races? Oh, boy, wouldn't it be cool to get out there and see one of those races? You know, and another guy, oh, I, you know what, I don't know about those races, but I could just use me a good horse. You know, I'm here, my donkey keeps keeps giving up on me, and I got to carry my load myself. I, if I could get me a good horse, I, you know, I'd be doing all right. And I, I don't know what these guys were talking about, but they're just normal guys having conversation, probably uh, picking on each other a little bit and having a good time sitting around the campfire. And, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, I mean, they're just sitting here talking. There's a normal guy having a normal conversation, then bam, 
the sky is filled with a light. And there's an angel standing there before them. You know, I, they, they weren't expecting this. It wasn't like, oh, here's the nightly angel again. Here it comes. No, they, they, they were surprised. They were scared. What in the world is going on? Could you imagine if you're driving down the street in the middle of the night and suddenly, bam, a huge light's in front of you. You'd probably be calling the news. I just saw a UFO. There's something going on here. This is nuts. You know, they, they weren't expecting this. This was crazy. But God chose these normal guys, these, these guys that were even below average in their society. He chose to use them in an amazing way. They weren't, all, they weren't really all that special. They were, just spe they were just shepherds, just normal guys. Yet God sent the angels to give them the message. And we're going to look at some things about these shepherds, about these guys. First, I want to look at a few things that these shepherds had against them. You know, God chose these shepherds, but there were some reasons they probably shouldn't have been the ones that were chosen. And when we look, we see they weren't qualified they weren't qualified people to be used of God. God used these shepherds, we're going to see here in just a little bit. God used them to get an amazing message out to the people of Bethlehem. And he used them, he, they were the first people he sent the angels to to tell them that the baby was born. But they weren't qualified to be used of God. They were shepherds. I mean, in their time, they were, they were the, the bottom of the social ladder. They were, they were out there taking care of the animals. They were nobodies. They were poor. They weren't qualified. They were more qualified people. They, God could have sent the angels to the religious people, the people who were worthy of being used by God. God could have sent the angels to people with wealth and money so that they could bring large gifts to, to Jesus. And we do see that later on, there are wise men that come and bring gifts, but God sent the shepherds first. God could have Use those with influence so that when they went out with the message, they would be trusted. I mean, nobody knows these shepherds. God could have chosen somebody that everybody would know their face. And when they say, hey, the Messiah is here and Jesus is here, everyone would trust them. But he didn't choose the influential. He, God could have chosen the educated, the scribes, those who had studied the scriptures and knew every passage and every jot and tittle, that knew every part of the Bible so that they could verify that this was the Messiah so that they could give their educated opinion on whether or not this is truly the Savior who is meant to come. But God didn't choose any of those people. God chose the shepherds. God chose the unqualified. They could have said, you know what? God, why don't, why don't we just let the religious leaders take care of this? Nobody's going to listen to us. Why, why are you coming to us? Why don't we let the religious leaders take care of this? No one's going to want to listen to us. This Messiah is not going to want to see us. We're nobodies. We're shepherds. You know what? Don't think that God can't use you or doesn't want to use you because you're unqualified. God loves using the unqualified. That's why I'm standing up here right now, right? God loves using people who are unqualified to do his work. The shepherds, they, you, know, you, you may think, well, I'm looked down upon by people. People don't respect me. The shepherds were looked down upon. Nobody res respected a shepherd. You may think, well, I have nothing to offer. What did these shepherds have to offer? Nothing. And yet God chose to use these shepherds. They were poor. They were, they were disrespected. They, they were at the bottom of that social ladder, and yet God chose them. Next, what else did they have against them? You know what? They, honestly, they weren't available. They were busy. You know, God could have gone to the people that were on break. God could have gone to the people that were at home with their families who had already gotten off work. God could have gone to the people that were on vacation, but no, God went to the people that were busy. God went to the people who... They weren't available. They were keeping their sheep. I mean, what, does this angel just expect me to leave these 143 sheep my boss sent me out here with and just to leave them here on the hillside and go out and see Jesus? I mean, what do you expect of me here? They weren't just hanging out in a field having a sleepover. No, these were busy men. They had a job to do. They had something they were busy doing. They needed to do what they were doing in order to feed their family. You know, this was their livelihood, and they weren't rich Men, they couldn't afford to lose these sheep. This was their livelihood. And yet in the midst of their busyness, in the midst of their work, God chose 
to call them. God chose to use them. God asked them to go and find Jesus. God wanted to use them to get this message out. And you know what? We may think, just like these shepherds, we don't got the time. We're not available. You know what, God? You can use somebody who has a little bit more time. Maybe somebody who's, who's retired. You can use somebody who's younger that doesn't have to work as much as I do. You know, I got a family I got to take care of. I got a job I have to do. And it's easy to let the busyness of life get in the way. These shepherds, they were busy. They had a job to do. And yet, God had a task for them. You know, life truly is busy. Whether it be work or are you guys school? You know, school? I mean, those teachers, they just assign too much homework. Am I right? My word. Yeah. Pastor Ryan included. Man, Pastor Ryan. And last week, weekend homework, they were complaining. Seriously, Pastor Ryan, weekend homework? That's the worst. You know, like three days to do it. You know, come on, guys. But, you know, uh, I, uh, we may be busy. Maybe school. Maybe family. You know, family can be busy. We, we have things that we got to do with our family. Uh holidays are coming up. And I tell you what, holidays are great, holidays are fun, but holidays can be busy. It's running from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. But in the midst of our busyness, we need to make time for Jesus. In the midst of their, of their work, of their busyness here, the shepherds were asked to make time to go and see Jesus. The shepherds were asked to go and find Jesus. They could have easily said, you know what? Let's send, uh, let's send uh, this little guy here. He doesn't really have much to do. Let's send him to go find Jesus like the angel said, but I'm too busy. I got to stay here with the sheep. Let's send somebody else to go do that. But no, they went. Why? Because they were making time for Jesus in the midst of their business. What else do they have against them? You know, this wasn't convenient for them. It was the middle of the night. It was the middle of the night. There was a distance. I don't know exactly how far. But they, they weren't jumping in their trucks and cars and driving off to find baby Jesus. No, most of these guys, they weren't very rich. They, they didn't have horses or maybe even donkeys. They had to walk all the way to Bethlehem. They're, they're way out in the outskirts in the fields with their sheep. And they had to walk all the way to Bethlehem. I don't know if they chose to take their sheep with them or if they left their sheep there on the, the hillside. I don't know how they did it. But either way, there's uh, inconvenience to it. If they leave their sheep there, there's a chance that wild animals are going to get to their sheep. If they're herding all these sheep all the way to Bethlehem, it's slowing them down. It was inconvenient for them. It was the middle of the night. They could have easily said, let's wait till morning. You know what? Baby Jesus is probably sleeping right now, and let's leave it that way. Tomorrow morning, we're going to go find Jesus. All right, guys, let's all, uh, let's all keep an eye on our sheep. Tomorrow morning when we get off work, the next shift comes in. We're going to go find Jesus then. It was inconvenient. It really was. And yet, they immediately went and found Jesus. You know, there's going to be times that serving God, that being a witness, that doing what God has called you to do is going to be inconvenient. You know, and it uh, seems like right now it's a time when a lot of what God asks us to do can be inconvenient. You know, there's COVID going on. It's, you know, we got to go out sowing in. And it was pretty cold out there, right, guys? We went out today. It's pretty cold. No, Alex says, no, no, I was sleeveless out there. I was good to go. And it's cold, you know. You're trying to go out and be a witness, but it's cold outside. There's COVID going on. People may not respond well to me. People don't want to listen to me. There's going to be times it's inconvenient to do what God has asked us to do. But could you imagine if any of these men had let those excuses get in the way? Could you imagine if they had, you know, the Messiah wouldn't want someone like me. Let somebody else go. Could you imagine if they said, well, someone has to stay with the sheep. You all go. I'll stay with the sheep. This, you know, this is a busy time. We've got to take care of them. We said, well, it's so cold away from the campfire. Just, I'm going to stay here by the fire. I don't, I don't know if I want to go. It's such a long walk. It's the middle of the night. Maybe I'll go tomorrow. If they had allowed these excuses to go in the way, imagine what they would have missed out on. I mean, God had something amazing. We get to read about these shepherds in the Bible and hear about what they did. Why? Because they didn't let those excuses get in the way. They got to be the first preachers of the gospel. They got to be the first preachers of Jesus, pointing people back to Jesus. Why? Because they didn't let these excuses get in their way. You know what? There's going to be reasons... And many times, in our minds and even in other people's minds, legitimate reasons why we can't fill in the blank. Why we can't be a witness the way God wants us to. Why we can't talk to so-and-so about Jesus. Why we can't serve God the way he wants us to. Because I'm busy. 
because it's inconvenient, because I'm not qualified to let somebody else do it. So many reasons, but if you let that reason get in the way, you're going to miss out on some amazing opportunities, some amazing things God wants to do in your life, some amazing ways God wants to use you. And you know, we have a church filled with people who over the years who have allowed God to use them. If you go to some of these people who have worked on the bus routes for years, who have allowed God to use them for years, whether it be in Sunday school class, in RU, in bus ministry, and ask them, well, would, would, you, would you have changed that? No. You know, because they were able to see God do amazing things because they didn't allow any excuses to get in the way. So we saw what the shepherds had against them. Now let's look at what the shepherds had for them. Well, why were they used by God then? Why were they able to do these things? The first thing we see, we're going to look in verse number 15. All right, it says, And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem. And see whether this thing is, has come to pass. Is that what it says? Whether this thing has come to pass? No. It says, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. You know what? These shepherds, they believed. They didn't say, let's go see if the angel's right. Let's go see if this thing is real. No, they believed what these angels told them. You know, uh, a lot of people believe a lot of crazy things. And, you know, what? I have... There's lots of stories you can find online about people believing just nuts things. I, I won't get into it, but I told some of the teenagers at Teen Accountability a while back about um, some people that believe in this spaghetti monster God. Okay, there's, there's crazy things that people believe. I remember as a kid, my brother and sister, they pretty much believed whatever I told them. Right, Didi? I mean, yeah, I could convince them of pretty much anything. And and they would believe me. I mean, things like the, the one that sticks out the most in my mind is telling, you know, my sister was going to use some ketchup for something. And I was like, Dee, here's the thing. You don't want to use that because just a, a, a teaspoon of ketchup, it's got more sugar in it, a, a pile bigger than this house. She said, well, well, how do they get the sugar in there? Oh, you know, they just stir it up real good and they keep stirring it and, and, and it dissolves and it, and it gets real. But I mean, th that's how much sugar is in there. And when they were little, they believe Anything I said, it seemed like I could convince them of anything. My brother is a little bit more of a skeptic than my sister. But most of the time, I could, I could get him to believe, especially when he was younger. I'm probably the reason he's a skeptic, honestly. You know, I don't know. But I get them to believe pretty much whatever. But these shepherds, they believed without a doubt that what these angels were saying was true. They weren't investigating to see if it was true. They believed immediately. You know what? If we're going to be used of God, the first thing we have to do is believe. The first thing we have to do is put our trust in Jesus Christ. And you know, if you haven't even accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you've never put your trust in Him, if you've never believed on Him, well, that's the first step. You're not going to get to see God use you in some great way until you've put your trust in Jesus Christ. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you know what, we'd love to have you make that decision today. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care how much Bible you know. I don't care how, how many years you've served God. I don't, I don't care if you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. None of that means anything. And you need to do that. It starts with believing. And if you are a Christian, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to start by believing that what God says is true. Many times the reason we're not doing what God is asking of us is because we don't truly believe in what he's telling us to do. You know what? The reason we may not be witnessing like we should is because we don't believe that it works like God says it does. The reason that, that we may not be serving God is because we don't believe that God can use me. It starts with believing. These shepherds, they didn't question the angels. They didn't say, well, are you sure it's Bethlehem? Are you sure this is where that we're supposed to go in a manger? That just doesn't sound right. I mean, uh, the Messiah's probably been born in a palace. Did you misspeak there? I mean, I don't know what language angels speak, but maybe in translation something got messed up here. And I don't know, I don't know about manger. They, they, but they did not question the angel. They believed immediately. And then... They saw Jesus. The next step is they went and they got to see Jesus for themselves. You know, they, they went to that stable. It says in verse 17, and when they had seen it, 
they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. They went and they found the manger. They found Mary and Joseph. And they found Jesus. And they got to see Jesus for themselves. You know, I I thought it was interesting. They did not, on their way to the manger, tell people about this Jesus. Now, they did believe. It's not because of their lack of belief. But once they saw Jesus... Immediately, that's when they started telling others about him. And until we see Jesus for ourselves in our own life, all the rest of the things we're doing are pointless. You know, I, uh, I, I really, especially as a teenager, enjoyed playing paintball a lot. I know some of our teenagers, they like paintball. Are there anybody in here who enjoys playing paintball? Anybody? All right, quite a few, actually. I loved paintball. And I remember one time I was playing paintball, and... Uh, I was in a perfect little hiding spot. You know, I'm not, I'm not real fast, so I wasn't, you know, one of those people that's like darting all over the place. And, you know, I just go from one hiding, one, one, one hiding spot to another. And it's got to be big enough to, you know, conceal. And so it has to be spots there so I could look out, uh, preferably while standing. It's easier to, for me. And, I, you know, I, w- I would do things like, and I, I'm here, and I'm looking out from my, uh, my, my hiding spot here, and I can see one of my opponents clearly. I mean, he's standing there, wide open, back turned to me, perfect opportunity for me to take them out. And I raise my gun up. I'm, I'm excited. You know, I don't get a lot of these shots. Normally it's everybody else shooting me. So here I am with my opportunity, and I pull the trigger. And there's, that's when I realized there was no paintballs left in my gun. And you know what? It, it didn't matter how many times I shot at that guy. I was never going to hit him if I didn't have any paintballs in my gun. Right, you can have the best gun, you can have the best shot, your opponent can be standing right out in the open, and none of it matters if there's no paintballs in the gun. And in the same way, you know what, you could do everything right. You could be a witness, you could go out soul winning, you could teach a Sunday school class, but if Jesus, if God is not involved in it, it's pointless. You know, you can, you can do all the right things, and without God, it means nothing. It's like shooting a paintball gun with no paintballs in it. Just air, it's not going to do anything. If anything, it's going to show everybody where you're at and get you shot. right? And it's not going to do anything. And yet, we go through all these things. We do all the right things. We we try to be a witness. And and we don't even have a relationship with Jesus Christ ourself. We haven't even seen Jesus in our own life. And just like these shepherds, before they went out, they first saw Jesus. I think of what pastor said this past Sunday, taste and see that the Lord is good. No, we need to first taste and see that God's good. And when we taste that, when we see God's goodness, that leads us to the next thing they had. They had passion. They were passionate. You know what? These shepherds, they could not help but tell people what they had seen after they saw Jesus. They could not contain themselves. They left that, that, that barn, they left that stable, and they could not help but tell people what they had seen. They could not help but tell people that Jesus was born, the Messiah was born. They could not help but glorify God. And if we truly experience God in our own lives, it's going to give us a passion to tell others. And when, we are, you know, when we're passionate and excited about something, many times we can't help but talk about it. You can tell what people like. You can tell what people are excited about. You know, for some people, it may be politics and the election, and they just, they want to talk about that all the time. And you know what, they they, they want to, they want to tell you what's going on with it and what's, what's going on here. Why? Because they care about it and they're excited about it. For some people, it may be sports and they, they want to tell you what happened in the game last night and who won and they're excited about it. And you can tell by the way they talk, their excitement. For some people, it may be movies or TV shows or books. Some people, it's work, whatever it may be. You can tell what someone's passionate about because they can't help but it come out. And if you're passionate about Jesus Christ, you're not going to be able to help but allow it to come out. It's going to pour over out of you. If you've had a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you've experienced God in your own life, you're not going to be able to help but have Jesus come out. You know, these shepherds, they were so excited they couldn't help but tell others. And if we've experienced God, we need to allow that to motivate us 
to tell others, to be a witness. You know, lastly, I see they continued. In verse number 19, it says, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. This wasn't just a one time. They went one night, saw this, saw Jesus, and then told everybody about it. No, they went back. When they went back to their sheep, when they returned, they continued to glorify God and tell people about the things that they saw that night. Continue to tell people about the glory that they experienced that night, about the angels that had came and given them a message and the fact that God had allowed them to see this this baby, this Messiah who was finally born, they couldn't help but tell others, and they continued to do so. You know, it wasn't just while they were in the presence of Jesus there in the major, but they continued. You know, when we go back, when we return, whether it's when we return home, when we go back to work, when we go back to our family, when we go to the grocery store, the bank, wherever it may be that we go, do we continue to glorify God? You know, it's easy to, to say amen when Pastor Howell's preaching and when a good song is sung in church. It's easy to glorify God when you're in a room with a bunch of believers. It's, it really is. It's easy. But when you go back to work with a bunch of coworkers that aren't Christians, are you glorifying God? You know, when, when you go to the grocery store and with a bunch of people that, you know what, they could care less about Jesus, are you glorifying God? When you go to your family and maybe you have some family that, you know, they're not real excited about what you're doing at church. They're not real excited about this whole God thing you've you've got yourself up into. Are you glorifying God? You know, the shepherds, it wasn't just this one night, this one time. They continued to glorify God in their lives. You know what? We need to tell others. We need to continue to tell others. We need to have the same excitement and passion that these shepherds had. It makes me think of Romans chapter 10, verses 13. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You know what? It's easy to complain about this world. It's easy to complain about politicians who have, who have views that are so contrary to Scripture. It's easy to complain about co-workers who act in ways that, that God would not be pleased with. It's easy to complain about people with their ungodly views and their language and their, their attitude. But how can we expect them to know God if we have never told them about God? How can we expect them to believe unless they've heard And how can they hear unless there's a preacher? You know, unless there's somebody that's going to tell them. Your coworker who who may act in horribly ungodly ways. And it's easy to complain about them to your other coworkers. It's easy to come home and complain about how awful your boss may have been. But how can you expect them to act like they know God if you've never even told them about God? You know, the gospel will change people's lives, but... How can it change the life of someone who's never heard it? How can it change the life of the person who you have refused to tell of the gospel? Our job as Christians is the same job these shepherds had. They came and they believed, they saw Jesus, and then their job was to proclaim Jesus to everyone they came in contact with. That's the same job we have. You know what's great? Because Christmas time, it's a great opportunity to tell others about Jesus. I think it's funny, people who would, would never consider themselves religious or godly at all, Christmas time comes around and they're now willing to talk about, about Christ and about God. I think of, uh, uh, I got a haircut today and the lady, she was very open and talking about, about Christianity, talking about God, talking about her beliefs. And Christmas really is a great time.